this right here is a beautiful young corn snake, hypo blood red corn snake. She's very, very beautiful. Very interactive, very smart. But that is not the subject of the video for today. The 75 is. I was doing. Move over in front a bit, a bit more. I was doing some some thinking and just uh, from what I observed over the last few months regarding this tank, um, or a few weeks regarding this tank and the last um, rescape, which is the current scape that it is now. What are some successes and failures, um, and what that means uh, in my eyes regarding regarding this tank? Um, plants and growth, and plants dying, and new plants, and which plants are living, lighting, whole bundle of things, health of the fish, lots of things. Um, that, you know, just what makes this tank, uh, you know, what, what has made this tank succeed and what has been a failure in this tank. Um, mm, you might have noticed the background by now that has been added to this tank. It's just a very basic one, but I thought it might add some depth to the tank. This, this piece of wood right here looks real on the camera, but it's actually just the background. Um, added that to, as I said, kind of maybe add some depth to the tank, help the fish feel like they can fall back even further into something and help hide some of the stuff behind it. Not that it was really bothering me, but I got kind of bored at looking at the wall and didn't feel like the tank was very deep and that is because of these jurapari right here always moving the substrate and keeping it from really stacking up high um, but it is a it is an it is a nice background that matches the the wood that we have here blends in very nicely on camera and in, and in person too it, it does look good but some successes, a lot of the success. I would say overall, generally, I am pleased with this tank and it's always still evolving. And um, I'm, I'm happy I get to maintain it. And this jungle bow has grown in really nicely across, across the back. I'd like it to be a bit denser, but given the Jurapari and uh, wherever it is, the redhead top of hose. Um, it can't really be too much denser um, quickly. It, it will take a long time for it to really get anywhere because they constantly are shifting around it, shifting the sand around it, sifting all the nutrients out and moving it, displacing it. So that is something to consider. Um, it's not going to get anywhere quick. Um, the limnophila has uh, heterophylla, heterophylla, however you want to say it, has grown in beautifully. I have these trimmings here, these right here, there's some over there. This one is a trimming that has, uh, that I cut off and then I threw it in there and just let it flow and it's still growing. <laughs> Very funny, I think. Um, and then in the background, let's see, the rotala is growing in nicely. Got several pieces of that in the background. It's uh, the Ritala Indica. Um, growing in right there as well. Let's see. Baby Tears. The Baby Tears and the Creeping Charlie did not do well in this tank. And I don't know if that's from the Earth Eaters or the temperature. Um, but they didn't do well. And that's alright. This Ritala still is 
doing fine as green until green and machondra. You can see the new growth out of each machondra right there, and of course the green is uh, very is easier to grow, so it's growing a lot quicker. But they uh, those are the two plants, the creeping Charlie and the and the baby tears didn't didn't do as well as I wanted them to, um, which is okay. Um, there's actually a piece of the creeping Charlie right there on the filter intake, so very thin, uh, very thin stem, very small, delicate stems that the earth eaters probably moved around or was just too hot for them. The Amazon swords are growing in okay, could be better. I just added root tabs to help kind of boost up, but definitely tomorrow I'm doing a water change and definitely going to trim out some of the dead uh, leaves and to uh, make room for some more fuller growth, some greener growth, and I'm looking forward to that. Golden Nasea, you can see remnants of it. There is some right there. I can, you can barely see it right there. It's still kicking, but it just didn't didn't do well after a few few weeks. It was doing well, and then it stopped, and it's still growing. I can see it. it's difficult to see through the through the leaves, but it's still growing there. And it's a uh, it's a very very hardy plant. But once again, I think the earth eaters the earth eaters just in this general area is what they enjoy so that's um that's what i'm going to chalk that up to is them and then this tiger lotus is doing what i want it to very pretty right now it's kind of all floofed up but you got the new growth there and not floofed up it's all retracted but um i can floof it up and move it i've got another one right there that spread and there's some new leaves coming out so tiger lotus is a very beautiful plant i love it um, and it's doing well. The java ferns are doing well. The java fern up there, the java fern there, they're doing fine. The anubius is doing well. The crypts are doing well. But one thing I'd like to do is try and get the crypts to carpet, but they just, there's just too much, um, you know, movement in the substrate. Um, which is amazing that they that they live and they do they do well enough um, with the constant shifting of the sand, um, and so I'm I'm pleased with their growth, but they never are going to get the chance to carpet unless I remove these jirapari. And then um, successes would just be the overall health of the fish. I think everything is still working out well. These fish have been with each other for a long time, uh, years, a lot of them. So it's not any surprise there, but the Jirapari and the Geophagus and the Akara are the newest. And they all get along well with the Discus and the, and the Tetras, but, you know, of course they scobble with themselves, and that's, that's expected, but they never injure each other. They're always brilliant fins and uh, healthy bodies. Nothing ever to worry about. And I think their time in this tank is coming to a close soon. Probably by the end of the year, we're going to have to move them out and um, potentially do a rescape on this tank to get a nice crypt carpet to get some nice middle, like, um, or background growth of the java fern, like a curtain of java fern, and then with some stem plants. Uh, kind of acting as a boundary between the foreground and the background and having those Amazon swords as a background, as a transition as well, I think that'd be beautiful. Ooh, one thing down here, this is Crypt Spiralis. I found that the other day. I found this right here is a Uruguinensis sword that I decided to take home from work. I'm excited to see how these grow in very different textures than what um, we're used to seeing. Beautiful coprofolia on that leaf, on that piece of wood back there. Anubias coprofolia. But the fish are doing fantastic. These bleeding hearts are just, they just look gorgeous. The reason for all those bubbles in the water is because I put, um, 
air stones. There's two air stones in this aqua clear. And that, you know, you're running hotter water, there's less oxygen, and so I want to make sure I have plenty of oxygen in the water. And uh, with the amount of fish and with the heat um, outside and the heat in this tank, it runs, let's see, 85 degrees right now. Um, so it's too hot, but it's just hot outside. So expected. They're all fine. I haven't had any issues needing to cool it down or anything. Just keeping the water clean and keeping the water moving is what's important. And you end up with successes and failures. Just a nice balance. And they're beautiful. There's about a dozen of them in here. And these, uh, these bleeding hearts. All, all the stun, you know, even the females are stunning too with that nice pink coloration. I think an upgrade to this tank will be a better light and removing the Jurapari eventually. Obviously, the light's going to come first, but looking at a few different things to add. But this is not an aquascape, this is a fish tank first, planted tank second. I wouldn't consider it an aquascape. Um, it is, it is, I think, nice, nice jungle style. Lots of things happening. They just ate discus and everyone did, but it's quite big. Either way, that's enough rambling for me. Thank you guys for watching. Have a good day.